All right. It is November 27th, 2023. It's 3.30 p.m. This angle is terrible, but it's about the ideas, right? <laughs> and what's crazy is those boxes right there are filled. That's a tripod, uh, a Roadster 2 podcasting system, uh, all the mics, uh, $1,800 <laughs> camera. <laughs> I have a sure microphone. And yet, here we are. <laughs> I am trying to organize stuff to get it together. I just have so much going on with crypto and the online business and poker or whatever. Anyways, I was on Twitter and somebody that, I don't know, I, I, I need to have a, a conversation with them. I'm sure it will in the future once I start posting these videos in 2024. Is Clint from Liberty Lockdown. Because I feel like no one cares about your feelings, Dave. <laughs> I, I, I do feel like I've been falling for him, for him for a while here. Let me pop on Twitter and read his bio here. And I, I, I thought my last time when I was online when he was smaller. Now he's got 112,000 on Twitter. But I thought that he was an and cap. So I'm not sure if his posts are meant to be like Ron Polish or like um, the other Liberty people that draw you in and then you come find crazy lunatics like me or if he really believes this stuff. But um, his post here, this is not a shot at him. Um, but his post here, because he talks a lot of politics, so maybe he's speaking to people that are still with caught up in the system of politics. But it says, topics we are once again debating that have been settled for centuries. One is hate speech, free speech. And then two, is censorship acceptable if it's the for the greater good? And the answer is we always be, yes, hate speech is free speech and no. Censorship is not acceptable for the greater good. And I'm not turning this into a, tw a Twitter battle. I just want to ha have the actual evidence here. I wrote, there's no such thing as hate speech or free speech. These are government propaganda terms. There's currently a huge mafia that owns large portions of land. And these landowners are deciding which speech can be said on their property. Philosophically, Land should be decentralized, then each owner can decide which speech can be used on their property. So, I think one of the things that I wanted to discuss is that, and again, I do this in, in real time, so I didn't really think about this before I turned the camera on. So, I want you to see the authentic process of how I go through these ideas, so maybe you can hopefully replicate, replicate it with yourself is philosophically if you're going to say there's hate speech or free speech then you're saying that people don't own have property because people that own their property their own property have the ability to censor any speech that they want on their own property so if you come on my property and uh, yeah i'm not going to censor myself if they want to fucking take it offline they can if you call somebody a cunt on my property and, and she doesn't like it then i'm gonna ask you to leave and if you don't leave i'm gonna use physical force and physically remove you if necessary because it's my private property and then if that has communal ramifications where stores and stuff don't want to work with me, then you can use uh, social pressure to stop me from doing things like that. But each person gets to 
be the judge of what they consider acceptable speech on their particular property. So really what's going on here with the free speech argument and why it's prop government propaganda, it's a problem of the commons. And uh, you probably already know about that. If you're not, just look it up online. I'm not going to explain that in the video here. But basically, you know, you, you can't please all the people all the time. So during elections, they just open up who they're going to please real wide with their rhetoric. But they're really just going to do, once they win, whatever the biggest campaign donors do and want. Because they're the mafia that owns the land. And the corporations and the other stuff that keep the slaves busy for them and collect the taxes. Because a corporation is just a tax collector branch of the government. They give them the ability to privatize profits and socialize losses. In return, the, they collect taxes and give the taxes to the government from the people, and then they don't have to pay any taxes. Uh, so it's just an entity written on paper that's not a capitalistic uh, thing. And I get some other videos on capitalism, so I'm not going to go through and explain that here. But what I want to explain here is just think, for a second, that you have the United States is owned by not only just the federal banks and the UN and NATO, they're like all part owners via force and uh, social pressures, but all the politicians have kind of like a say of their ownership. So it's kind of like they separated it from one king into multiple kings. And then their people are bribable. There's amount of money. So uh, if they're getting bribed for their campaign to keep them in this cushy lifestyle to make rules down from the rulers, then they're just going to allow the people. It, there's no line for the speech. They're going to allow people that are paying them the most, most money or could ruin their careers to talk about genocide in groups online and they're going to allow and then people that don't they don't like they're not going to allow them uh they're going to allow the people that they like to vote and dependent on them to say racial slurs and they're going to say the people that want to be independent and don't want the government anymore can't say racial slurs but it's no different than if you own your own piece of property and your buddy comes over and he calls you an asshole and you've been friends with him for 20 years you're going to laugh and be like all right but if the mailman comes over and calls you an asshole, you're going to be like, get the fuck off my property, dickhead. And there's going to be an argument. And it's not uh, hypocritical. It's you have private property and you have ownership over that private property. So you get to decide on that private property what goes. Now, there's currently the illusion of that for the most part. But as the censorship gets moved online... Really what's going on is the government is saying this metaverse that you've created, this second layer of society that was independently owned um, and these owners were allowing people to say what they wanted to say. No, we're in charge of it now and, and we'll decide what you get to say. So sites like Rumble are centralized and they're owned and the owners of that site allow you to say certain things sites like x are also centrally owned and you get to say certain things and the the mafia that owns the land that the servers are put on and the people are on and the electricity and the water and stuff are saying well if you still want to have a house here and a business here because we own all the land you never own property you always have to lease it minimal on taxes. Then you're going to shut this down and shut this down and shut this down. Um, there's sites like BitChute that are on the blockchain. And they're decentrally owned. So they're centralized the way they're ran. Um, but the way something gets uh, removed from the system is through a decentralized process. And it's on the, it's on the blockchain. 
in a blockchain, as far as the technology is concerned, it's a way for um, an individual to own property that's protected through a decentralized community. And the property that you're buying on the internet is the block with on, with on the chain. And that's where you're storing the data. That's the piece of real estate that you have. So what would be really good is if you could decentralize even the internet down to that point, and then you could put whatever you want onto your block. And then it was similar, you know, and when people get more comfortable with it, you can mute and block and edit certain material that you want, don't want to see from individuals. So your experience is good, but also, um, you want to see the evidence that people are leaving behind if they're doing immoral things that you don't agree with so that you don't associate with them and you can even share that information so other people don't. For example, somebody is doing illegal activity and you point it out to the people and you can figure out what they are. You could take away their electricity if they're off the grid, they could continue to do it. Um, and you would just isolate them to the point. You wouldn't have to go in there and murder them or burn them down like Waco. You just isolate them to a point where, like, so what's the cure for, like, a pedophile in a free society? It's just you let everybody know they're a pedophile, and then you're like, well, no one has their kids around them. They're not allowed to drive on streets. They can't leave their house. No one gives them water. No one gives them electricity. And... If they try to leave their property and come onto your private road or private property, you can defend that property. And God sorts it out for you. And you might think, well, that's harsh. And it's like, well, that's what it is. We've all decided that we're not going to share with you anymore. <laughs> so God will sort it out for you. Uh, you know, there's a consequence, there's a natural consequence to living in a society like that and what's happening right now is the government is stopping those natural consequences from other individuals and forcing them to associate and just like uh there's no such thing as uh you know they if they, they say oh there's government gives you freedom of association it's like well no because then you're forcing bakers to sell cake you know gay cake, wedding cakes it's also freedom to disassociate. So once you can disassociate and decentralize, then you can really punish immoral activity that you don't agree with in a society because the natural consequence from, from the Lord is if you can't get help from food, water, and outside sources, you're either isolated to the point that you go insane alone or you starve to death because you can't get enough resources to survive and no one's going to trade with you anymore. And if you've ever watched the, read the essay, I Pencil, or um, saw the, the YouTube video, I Pencil, maybe you should go watch it. It's really good. No one individual can create most of these really complex items that we have today. It's a group effort. So I'm not saying there isn't any people that can't go live alone, but Amish people aren't living alone in the woods. They're still communal and they still have groups with one another and there's people that go out into the middle of the woods and hunt but they have a gun don't they you know what i mean they got to come in town and get ammunition and what have you so it, it is it's really difficult because you're, you're sending somebody back to the stone age if they're going to act as if they're an animal they can go live like one and die like one um so i don't know quick little video here i'm about 15 minutes in I'll give the call to action here for you in your day to day life about is about philosophy or whatever. Just think, think about the world. Think about the government, and think about really what it is from top down. It's a group of individuals using force to collectively own all the land and force you to act on that land as they see fit, without cooperation or negotiation. And if you remove that and people start negotiating, and I'll give you another book recommendation here. Um, maybe not Jetson's World. I think it's a short essay by Jeffrey Tucker talking about the beach. And it's basically like you don't need police officers when you go to the beach to figure out where you're going to put your blanket. You you figure it out and everybody gets along and they they figure it out with one another. 
Um, and if you're able to defend yourself, the people that don't figure it out get removed from the society really quick. So you do that from the top down. You start privatizing and decentralizing land, roads, housing, sharing, the internet, books, everything that you have. And then you protect it with uh, technologies like uh, firearms, um, fences, security systems, and blockchains, and proof of stake, and hash graph. Uh, and then when people come after you, you can defend yourself with evidence if you have it or not. But then the speech um, is regulated on the individual level between two individuals. I have some friends that I speak to and say certain words in front of, and I have other friends that I don't. And they call it like code switching or whatever, but it's just that people have different sensitivity levels that they're comfortable with. And you can do that within a friendship uh, in a community. And for instance, if you owned a small business, you might regulate the speech on that property that you own differently than if you have a house party at your house where you invite your friends, how you regulate the speech. But just to end it, understand that free speech um, and... Uh, hate speech are two sides of the same coin. It's the idea that government owns the land, this mafia owns the land, and one side saying, hey, if you vote for us as your mafia, we'll let you say whatever you want. And the other one's like, no, you can't let everybody say whatever you want. You have to censor some words. And it's like, how about no one mafia gets to control all the words that everybody says, and each individual person gets to be kind of like the king of their land and the property that they have. Having said that, you could still choose to live within a community situation, obviously. So you could go live on, you know, it's similar to the platform. So if you if you want to be super polite and fake and just put heart emojis everywhere and fire, fire emojis, this is lit, you go on Instagram. If you want a little bit more free speech, you go on X. If you want a little bit more free speech, you go over to Gab or you go over to Rumble or you go over to BitChute. And the communities are going to be different there um, because they're less regulated and you're not going to be able to see as much as the, the mainstream people that encompasses everything. It's the difference between if you want to make an indie film and it's about the art and a couple, you know, thousand people see it, then that's what it is. But if you want to, you know, a million or two million or three million or five million or six million or 300 million people to see it, you have to make something a little bit more watered down and safer for uh, different appetites, I should, let's just say. so. All right, food for thought. Hope everybody's crushing life. Love you all, except for the ones that don't.